I don't think the definition of love changes. I think you get a little more practical about what it is. Hmm. And uh, I feel that, um, you know, everyone in life at every age always loves the magic of love. Hmm. Okay, because it makes your skin glow, it makes you feel so good from the inside and it's, it's magical hmm. when, you, when you're in love with anything or anyone or your work or there is a magic about it that takes place. One question arises that we give so many advices to the people but at the same time are we applying on us also? Of course not <laughs> because we're all double standards. Yes. We all have double standards. Yeah. It's like okay, it's easy I to can, give advice. it's very easy to give advice. It's very difficult to live by your own advice. Thank you for coming to Impact Stories, Maria. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so my first question is all about your so many career options. <laughs> this was something I want to know first. So I, I don't think um, it was something that I intended to do. I think uh, life happens while you are planning something. So uh, I realized very early on in life that never to make plans. So plans are something that uh, I don't do. I may plan what uh, I want to eat, uh -huh. but that's about as much. Um, I think uh, what happened to me is that I was presented with various opportunities in life and I think I grabbed it with both my hands. Mm. And uh, some of the things happened to me while I was doing other things. And uh, I, I, I realized down the line that um, I don't like being in a box and I don't want to be in a box. Hmm. I am best left running loose and uh, that's the only way for a person to actually flower. And uh, that's why I have dabbled in many things, <laughs> maybe have been very unsuccessful in some or they've been left behind because they uh -huh. didn't anymore bring me uh -huh. joy. and. Um, I've just gone ahead with my gut, you know, and uh, that's all that I've done in life. With age, what exactly joy means? To me, joy means peace. It just means peace. Everything in life, for me, boils down to peace. If my insides are peaceful, I am good. If my insides are in turmoil, my whole life is in turmoil. So for me, I've realized that nothing else matters but inner peace. Some people say that I'll, someday I'm going to achieve this success. And when they land there, they figure it out that this was not the joy they were looking out. Do you agree on this? So, you know, um, as a kid, as a kid, mm -hmm. I, remember, I remember I used to watch this one close-up ad <laughs> and uh, where... Uh, this model would walk and then they would say, excuse me, what toothpaste do you use? And she would turn around and say, me. And I remember I used to do that in front of the mirror. Uh -huh. Okay. And I went later on in life and I did three toothpaste ads with close up. So this was the only thing in life I remember as a kid that I thought, uh -huh. sorry, um, that, I, uh -huh. that I thought was uh -huh. something that I do remember uh -huh. uh, growing up that Okay, that was really nice to turn yeah. around and smile yeah. and say, me? Yeah. <laughs> Very stupid, but... Uh, but I've always thought that uh, whatever it is in life, I need to give it my 300%. Mm. Okay, and uh, if I'm not giving it my 300%, then I actually don't like it very much. Because when, I'm, when I love something, I'm able to give everything of me without batting an eyelid. And I enjoy it, you know? So, um, I think working hard is one of the most important things in life. Mm. Sometimes you may not find uh, that you are enjoying what um, you are doing at the moment. At which point of time you need to make a conscious decision 
as to why am I doing this, you know. You're either doing this because you really love it and are passionate about it. Mm. And on the other times, it's because it pays the bills at that point of time. Mm. Now, sometimes those two parts converge. You know, sometimes they don't. Mm. I feel they don't have to converge. Okay, they can be two different separate things. Mm. Because I've also realized that when you love something very much, you're not able to make money out of it because you look at it very differently. Mm. You look at it with so much of love that you're unwilling to share it. You know, when you love something a little less, then you are okay with sharing mm. it. So these are the few learnings. So one, one question I want to ask from your book, to the moon and back. So this is, you have written life, love and everything in between. And what is it, everything in between? I think everything in between is all that you go through in life. You know, uh, the plans that you make that mm. don't happen. Mm. Um, the paths that you start walking on that lead you somewhere else. Uh, the dead ends that you come up with. Um, the pitfalls, the valleys that you sit in. Mm. The mountains that you sit on watching sunrises. The forests that you sit in that are completely dark and scary sometimes or sometimes full of beautiful moonlight. You know, so life is just a mix of all that, right? Mm. And if in the middle of all this, you find love, okay? And um, you feel you want to give it your best shot. Mm. You do that, you know? And most of the time, I have seen that love leads you to disappointments. Mm. Because then you start expecting, which is only normal, mm -hmm. very, very normal. Very normal. normal. And uh, and then I think uh, it goes a bit off, you mm. know. So how with age, the definition of love changes? I don't think the definition of love changes. I think you get a little more practical about what it is. Mm. And uh, I feel that, um, you know, everyone in life at every age always loves the magic of love. Hmm. Okay, because it makes your skin glow, it makes you feel so good from the inside and it's, it's magical hmm. when, you, when you're in love with anything or anyone or your work or there hmm. is a magic about it that takes place. And um, I think uh, God gives that to us, you know, at various points of times in our life and, uh, um, and then God takes it away to make you understand how special it was. Hmm. <laughs> and what is in your book is life what you have written? So for me, life is your every day, your every breath, your conscious decisions, your unconscious decisions, the choices you make, the choices you don't, and in between that, what you have to live with, you know? So I think everything we do has, has, um, has an equal and uh, has an equal reaction or an equal response or a not so equal response. So I think that for us is life. Mm. We live in between all of that. Mm. You know, we live we live in between trying to make decisions, not making them, uh, hoping that by not taking a call on something, mm -hmm. it goes in the right direction. We um, we sometimes feel that when you when you give a lot. You get as much back, uh -huh. but those proportions do not actually, there is no tally to those proportions and uh, there is no real barometer that says in life that if you do this, you will do this. You know, like how when you're driving a car mm. from one destination to the other and you know, okay, I'm going to drive at 100 kilometers an hour and this is a straight road and so I'm starting now to reach at this time. It's a given, you know, mm. that's a surety. Mm. Life has no sureties. You have no clue what can happen within the next minute. Mm. And um, I think that's the beauty and tragedy of it all. Do you believe that everything happens for a good reason? Ah, <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes, I do. I do, but I feel when you're in a place that is has taken away your sleep and has taken away your peace and has torn your love into bits and it's lying on the floor. At that point of time, you can't really see it, you know. 
but in time you feel okay i'm glad i didn't walk that way and i'm glad i didn't stay in that place and even though this hurt me or that person hurt me i think this was done because of my own good you see that a little later on in life when you're in a situation you can't really see the the beauty or the cause of it or the effect of it it's only when like a like when you look at a painting mm-hmm. okay when you're too close you can only see gashes mm-hmm. you know you only see the brush strokes and you you're just looking at a patch of colors but it's when you go far away that a painting actually makes sense to you you know that you look at it and say okay those were when you see it closely it's just this color going into that color when you walk back you see that it is not just you know gashes but it's it's this beautiful thing mm. that makes you feel fabulous so i think it's a, it's it's like that have you experienced something like you have you're top of your career and then suddenly suddenly you feel like empty that the success yeah. yeah the success is not for me i have some other purpose on this planet so you know i must tell you when i was working with mtv when i started working with mtv i i loved it i loved every moment of it when i think back to it i still love it uh-huh. but i know there was a time towards the end of when just before i left that i started feeling like i have matured and i love what i do but there is something more that i need to do and uh, i also felt that i was traveling too much and i wanted to just stay home you know so um when i started going to work all i kept thinking about is how when can i finish and when can i go back home you know and i think that happens to the best of us in the most beautiful situations and i've realized that too much of a good thing okay always makes you feel like you know that's just huh. we humans are a bit like that hmm. you know but uh, when i think about when i think about life i i try and say thank you at the end of the day for whatever it is mm-hmm. and i try and start the next day from ground zero and try not to take the baggage of the past day into mm. the current day but i'm only human i will say one statement and you have to just say something what do you feel in your okay. heart right people around us know how to celebrate success but not as a human being yeah because uh, i feel that when when people say you're successful what does it really mean it just means that at this point of time in your life those thousands of people love what you're doing okay but they don't know you as a person so they may celebrate they may think they are celebrating you but what they sell what they actually celebrating is a projection of you you know and all of us have a version of ourselves that we never share with anyone you know and sometimes it could be the most horrible part of yourself mm. or the most wonderful part of yourself you know it will always be a combination of these two so sometimes when you meet people they say oh my god that person is just wow i love that person and some people may say oh my god that person horrible mm. horrible mm. you know because we all Agree. are mm. we all are we are all half really terrible and we all half are really fantastic mm. and i think every day personally we struggle between how do we walk that middle path where we can be the best versions of ourselves and sometimes we fail miserably mm. and sometimes we succeed mm. and i think that's life beautiful so uh, two people remain together in a relationship also but then when they go towards the end when they start falling into a marriage a bond they only same two people are there but what is the difference in the story in the both end so i think what what happens is um like what uh, like what spider man said <laughs> <laughs> the great power comes great responsibility, responsibility. it's beautiful and and you know um the balance there changes everyone then assumes a role you know and then you have to you have to take that role and do the best that you mm. can in that role and if you don't want to do that role then that causes trouble 
because everyone assumes that a man does this, a woman does this. Now, say for instance, the man does not want to do what, you know, uh, everyone thinks that he mm -hmm. should be doing and he mm -hmm. wants to do something else. Mm -hmm. Then immediately there is a problem there because it's like, but, but I'm doing this, so you're supposed to do this. Mm. So, you know, I think, um, and it happens everywhere. In, forget a marriage, in any relationship mm. between two people, there will always be a time where you somehow feel that, why am I doing this? Mm. Why am I in charge of this? And vice versa, you'll feel the same. Mm. Why am I in charge of this? Mm. Why, why do I have to do this? Mm. You know? So, it's, it's just that. It's, it's I think, um, it's the familiarity of it. It's the taking granted of it. It's the fact that all of us then um, drop, drop our white robe. And uh, what is is? What is the one lesson or the lessons every day you learn as a parent? It's the most toughest <laughs> thing in the world. I don't think um, anything I have done in life till today has been as tough as parenting. I've come to, the, I've come to a place in life where I feel that I don't know how to do this. I really, really don't. You know, and um, I don't know from where to learn. Except every day try and juggle something. Every day try and make peace with something. Every day try and say, today was not too bad. But um, I don't know how to do this. So, as I'm, in a, I'm a bachelor, the one question I want to ask, how one gets to know about this calling that, oh, this is the time I want to get married. Because everybody is doing their good their, in their careers. Then they feel the need, okay, this is the relationship I have to complete. So when they feel the need that I should get married. Oh my God, I don't know that. <laughs> I don't know that. I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> I think, um, <laughs> I think when you find somebody that you don't want to let go of, hmm. is when, I think normal people do get married. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, being around the kids, what are the challenges you're facing day-to-day -day life? So my children are teens. Mm, uh, okay? That's what I. My, that's why I ask. I'm my son asking. is 19. Mm -hmm. My daughter is 16. Mm -hmm. They have a life of their own, mm -hmm. and they definitely don't want me part of it mm -hmm. because they feel they know everything, and mm -hmm. I don't know anything. So I think my everyday struggle with them is to just put one step into the door every day. And some days the door doesn't open. Mm -hmm. Some days it does for a little bit. Mm -hmm. But suddenly I am um, I'm on the outside trying to get in. You know, so I don't know. Um, as a parent, I like I said, I don't know how to do this. When we say that this the purpose of life, what does the purpose mean? In to me, your life, yeah. I have no clue what my purpose in life mm. is, but um, I think every day when I wake up in the morning, I just, I just feel that today whatever comes my way, I'm going to do it in the best way possible. You know, that's all I think of. Sometimes I wake up with the burden of the past day. Sometimes I wake up mm. all great. Mm -hmm. But if you ask me what is my purpose in life, I've not yet found that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, and I guess because I've not found that, uh -huh. I'm constantly searching. Searching, yeah. And I guess because I'm constantly searching, I do so many different things. Because I have not yet found that purpose uh, in life. One poem you like from your book, this is the best, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I love all of them, uh -huh, but still we have some... But I'm going to yeah. read you uh -huh. something that is very tiny, which uh, when I wrote, I knew, so I wrote a lot. Mm -hmm. But when I wrote this, I knew that this, I wanted it to be in the book. And it is, uh, it's a poem that anyone can identify with. Uh -huh. It is not gender centric. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's gender fluid. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> it's page 86. It's called War. When we went to war, 
with our hearts and our heads, with warfare set, strategies planned, and emotional treaties negotiated. You chose to battle for you. I chose your side too. Who chose me? I never thought of this before. But today I ask myself, who is on my side? Not you, not even me. I was at war with no armor, just a heart full of hope and a battlefield ahead. To me, I love this poem because um, I think this poem tells you about the basic um, human side of relationships where sometimes in life you love so much that no matter what you're going through, you pick the other side and you support the other side and you are empathetic to the other side and you do everything you can but who is looking after you? And we forget that mm. and we realize that very late when everything has actually left and you're, and you're sitting with, um, with you know, the remains of the day is when you realize that nobody had my back do you believe in this thing that no matter you're enjoying success or not, it is very important to practice gratitude at the same time? Yes, I think it's very, very important. I think it's very important to wake up every morning and say thank you to the universe. If you are a religious person, you would be saying thank you to the, to the higher being that, that uh, resounds with you. But I think to say thank you for every little thing in life, sometimes mm -hmm. it's very important. You know, um, this is something that I never did before. I think mm. it's a practice that I started about 10 years ago. Mm. And um, sometimes even in the most horrible places, and you know, especially when, you're, when you are in a place where the other person or a situation is causing you so much of turmoil, at that point of time to just say, you know what, thank you, because this is still better than so much else in life, you know. And it's very difficult. And sometimes you just don't want to say thank you. You just want to say, just take this away. Uh. <laughs> you know. But nothing leaves you. I've realized nothing leaves you till it has not dragged you through the mud and has not taught you a very, very good lesson. If you've not learned that lesson, then it teaches you an even more difficult lesson the next time. So I feel, I feel in life, I've gone through a lot of stuff. Some lessons I've not learned and so they keep repeating. Some lessons I've learned and I look at it and say, okay, that place I'm never walking again, mm. you know. So I think that's what it is. Do you believe in manifesting also? I've not been good at it. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel that even manifestations, they work for your higher good. Mm. Sometimes you may want something so badly in mm -hmm. life and you may be thinking about it and, you know, storyboarding it and whatever the tools are that life gives you and you are taught. But I feel that if the universe or if the God above feels that this place is not meant for you, no matter how much of manifestations you mm. do, that's not going to come through. Yeah. And you may feel like it's a setback and you may feel that, why am I not reaching there? Why am I not going there? Why is this person and me not working out? Why, why do I have this turmoil with X, Y and Z? But I think the fact is, in the big picture that we all already have and the big plan that God has already drawn for us, He is taking us on this journey. Hmm. You know, and sometimes we walk to places that we are not supposed to be in and so that does not work out. You know, and so we may, man we may try manifesting something that is just not happening. Maybe we need to say, okay, relax now and trust the universe and say, you know what? This is going to work out. It's going to work out in the way that it's going to get the best out of me and make me a better human being than what I am at the moment. And so, um, I think in my life, the only thing I would say I manifested is my close-up ad. Uh -huh. <laughs> the rest, everything it's that I thought it's, of. It's for real. Yeah, uh -huh. that, that's everything I can tell uh -huh. you. The rest, 
every path that I've thought of, uh -huh. okay, has never, I've never, re never, it's never really happened. Uh -huh. But life has happened and it's happened in its own beautiful way. Uh -huh. And um, I always, always feel at the end of everything, mm -hmm. I feel there is something beautiful waiting at the corner. You know, as soon as you turn, uh -huh. there's something beautiful waiting around the corner. And I think that's what keeps me going. Do you believe in God? Of course, I believe okay. in God. Something happened in the past which have connected more towards the belief in the strong belief in the God. So, <sighs> this happened in my life, and I am and now I have a strong belief. I've always had a very strong belief in God, you know. And um, but years there's, ago, there's always a situation in so life. Yeah, yeah. It was a very funny situation uh -huh. actually. So years ago, I was I went off, I was going off to Italy, and I knew when I go to Italy, I'm going to go to Rome. Now I'm Roman Catholic, uh -huh. okay? And uh, Rome is, uh, of course, the heart and soul of the Roman Catholic Church. Mm. And I was in Italy. Uh -huh. I was in Tuscany at that time, mm -hmm. and I'm very good with with maps, uh -huh. okay? And I'm very good with roads. It's like if I go somewhere, I immediately it just sits in my head, you know. And I was having these tussles. Thinking, okay, I'm in Italy and uh, I'm going to Rome, but is there really a God? And is there, you know, all these things? And I was running because I love running, so I was running in the morning. And I was, I was somebody who would, I didn't need my phone for maps, and I, I would just like run and I would run back. And while I was running back, I lost my way. Ankit, I lost my way for 45 minutes. 45 minutes. 45 minutes. So I. And I remember there was a Duomo next to, I live, next to where I lived. So I kept running and then I started, then, and there were, I'll never forget this, I was on this road and instead of taking the road to where I was supposed to go, I got lost. I went to that path and I forgot where I had to go. So I took the wrong path down and then I got completely lost. And I ran into, you know, this entire whole um, field full of grapes. And I thought because I could see the Duomo, but the more I was running towards it, the more I was going further away. It was really crazy. So I stopped on the side of the road. And I have great belief in this one particular saint called Saint Anthony, mm -hmm. who is the saint of lost things. Mm -hmm. At that point of time, I was a lost person who was also wondering, is there a God? What am I doing? You know, all that, that had never crossed my mind before. And I was standing on the side of the road and I, I just said, St. Anthony, I said, I'm so sorry that I ever had even a moment of doubt in the divine. I said, please, please help me out of here. Just get me back to where my villa is. You won't believe, Ankit, I... There was a car and I just flagged, I was like calling out and this car stopped. There was an old lady in it, an old Italian lady in it. And I looked at her and I, she didn't know English. I don't know Italian. I just told her, I'm lost, I'm lost. I need to go home, my home, Casa. And I said, I live next to the Duomo. And she just kept looking at me like she was fully wrinkled. And I told her, please, I said, please, I just need to go home because I was lost. Mm. I was just roaming on there mm. in various directions. Mm. For 45 minutes, mm -hmm. I was just running and running, trying mm -hmm. to find the road. Mm -hmm. And she said something to me and she gestured me in. And there were all things in a car. So I picked it up and I put it at the back and I sat there and I said, thank you, thank you. Gracias, gracias, gracias. Because I knew very few Italian mm -hmm. words. And you won't believe how close I was to my house. And which is why I always believe what I told you in the first. She went straight. And she turned and I was at my house. Oh. Okay, and it was surreal. And I I just, you know, inside me, something just told me that I am always blessed and I'm always looked after. And I should never ever, even for a minute, doubt that there is there is the lack of a divine presence around me 24 7. Hmm. And um, I think for me, that was <laughs> when the penny dropped. Mm. People, how people celebrate success. If 
ever failure comes in your way, how you celebrate it? It's like it's okay, fine. It's part of part. I've had lots of failure, uncle. Uh -huh. I've had. Uh, I've not always been very successful. You've only seen the bits that were yeah. successful. Uh -huh. Nobody sees the pain that somebody goes through. Nobody sees the pitfalls that anybody that you go through. You know, so people only celebrate the part of you that is shiny, and they don't know the dark bits of you. And the dark bits of you stay with you, and they make you the person who you are. And so every time there's something that you do creatively beautiful, it comes from the mm. deepest, darkest moments in your life. That's what it is. So basically, when people are actually celebrating your success, you know that it's act you know where it's come from, and that's what you celebrate. Mm. You know, you look at it and say, "Okay, I was in that dark hole." And I've climbed out of it, and you may not know that, but uh -huh. inside me, uh -huh. I know what it, it is. is. Yeah. Beautiful. In the toughest days, I have seen people that they go this down in their life that they figure out that I'm going through some in depression. So how people manage to come out of it very easily, which today's generation is not able to handle properly. See, I think. Um, Thankfully, mm -hmm. today's generation knows when they are depressed. Hmm. Okay, hmm. because uh, mental health is such a big thing. Today, big thing, very big thing. Which yeah. is great. Hmm. Okay, I think all of us, uh, in my growing years, we, um, when you went through a dark period, you kind of had to cope with it on your own. Okay, you had to figure how to get out of this. What do I do? Okay, talk to a few friends. That's all we did. You know, uh, at that point of time, we didn't have counselors. We, we did, but it was not open. It was not open, open or yeah. it was not something that you could actually go to, you know, easily, unless there was like a big problem. Today, I feel that um, this generation knows what, what they're doing. Uh, but sometimes I feel it's dangerous mm -hmm. because there is so much available. Mm -hmm. There is so much available mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. there is so much available mm -hmm. on the net mm -hmm. that sometimes everyone assumes that they are going through something, or they probably um, may feel that this is because this is what I read, and so I tick 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 tick. Mm -hmm. This is who I am now, you know. So I feel that there is there it it is it is uh, we are in a place right now where there are all these tools that are available. But I don't think everyone knows how to use them. Hmm. And uh, I really feel that today, um, because everything is so open and so wonderful, there's so much help that you can get. I think today to ask for help and to rectify is a little easier process. Hmm. You know, I think today um, kids, adults alike, there is no shame in saying, listen, I'm, I'm in therapy. Or I'm seeing a counselor hmm. because I'm struggling with, I'm struggling with this, I'm struggling with this, I'm struggling with this. So I think today it becomes a little easier because you're able to openly hmm. seek help. Hmm. You know, uh, as opposed to a time when, you know, probably people were really, really suffering and there was no outlet because there was so much of shame attached to hmm. having some kind of mental trauma. So today I have seen that people say that men don't understand me and women say... But that's yeah. a normal It's a process. blame game is going on. That's, that's women are from, uh, men are from Mars and women are from Venus. Yeah. Because that is because intrinsically a woman thinks a certain way, a man thinks a certain way. I may be able to think you that you may be feeling like mm -hmm. this, you know, mm -hmm. and a man can think, oh, maybe she is feeling like yeah. this. But maybe we are missing the point. Hmm. And the only thing a man and woman can do is to keep communication lines open. And if communication fails, there's nothing in the world that can help a relationship. Simple, simple, simple. So again, one question arises that we give so many advices to the people, but at the same time, are we applying on us also? Of course not, <laughs> because we're all double standards. Yes. We all have double standards. Uh. It's like, okay, it's I can, give advice. it's very easy to give advice. Oh, yeah. It's very difficult to live by your own advice. You know, 
it's damn difficult because when you standing in a spot and you are faced with the person that you are having an altercation with then those rules don't apply to you somehow mm. you know the rules of engagement don't apply to you so yes it's very difficult mm. you know most of the time when you when uh, uh, when you advising a friend you're able to give such sane advice uh -huh. haven't you realized that uh -huh. we're able to say the most sensible wise things to a friend till we are in that situation and then you are all over the place because you can't do it mm. you know so it's it's very difficult what you what you say and what you do sometimes is very difficult to keep together you know when it when it concerns relationships i would say i think work that way is a bit easier because i think work um like i'm very good with figuring what i want with work but i think when when it comes to relationships of any kind whether it is a friendship whether it is love whether it is parent child whether it is you know colleague relationships on the other hand the moment there is a bit of um i would say fondness if there is love then immediately all the other possessiveness all those kind of things mm. start happening and if they don't happen in a very big form they happen in a little form on mm. the outskirts and that is just being human what do you think that today's generation it's the need of the r to to shape marriage as as an institution we have to shape it again boss i have no <laughs> idea about all this i wish i wish i had answers for but if you i am just asking your thought over it okay if you would like to give any suggestion over this boss everyone's bed you have to lie in it and you have to figure <laughs> which side of the bed is yours and whether you want to get it off uh, it uh, buy a new bed uh, change the bed uh, uh, mattress uh -huh. yeah change the bed sheets wash, wash them up you decide <laughs> there is like like in parenting like in marriage like in relationships there is no wrong or right there's absolutely no wrong or right what is great for you may just are we looking at and saying are you crazy mm. don't ever mm. you know and what is good for me you may think what are you mad so you know relationships are a place it's like um, like i always feel politics religion and relationships are a very 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 personal matter and there is one size does not fit all mm. you know and that's how it is so after meeting you i figured it out that you keep on smiling for every situation how you manage to smile in the in the worst yes. of your situations yes i have i have managed to walk out and smile and do my work and get out of a place and cry alone yeah because i think uh, i think everyone does it i don't think there's anyone in this world who actually goes and displays uh, their uh, brokenness Uh, openly to the world because uh, no one's interested everyone just looks at you as a piece of oh you know what happened that happened to that person but nobody's really bothered about you mm. it's only your close people that are bothered about you and i share what uh, i'm feeling only to the very closest and to the rest of the world you'll always get me smiling mm. <laughs> how important is it to have a shoulder as a friend or anyone very it's important very, very important very important mm. i think it's very important to have truthful people around you who when you're whining um who tell you hello excuse me mm. shut up you know you're talking crap mm. and you're wrong i think it's very important to have those people in your life who kind of show you the mirror and say excuse me please look at this this is what you're doing i think that's important i want you to read out one more poetry from your book oh no oh god okay i don't know but Oh, which one? Take your time. So everything is so big now <laughs> that I'm just trying to find a chotu wala. Huh. Okay. So this piece is called much more much more much more to put it simply i can't love you any less much more is the only way i know 
But how can I knock on your door when you don't live there anymore? You walked away, stopped saying I love you one day at a time, and then you disentangled your fingers from mine. Do you remember? Come away with me, you said. Let me tell you how I feel without any expectations. I walked into your arms like a homing pigeon to her nest. I believed you. I trusted what you felt. Let this not be a forgotten chapter in my life, you said. And now, I'm left to deal with the forgetting and all the chapters that are staring at me from the aisle, watching your heart walking away from mine. You mean a lot to me. Let me show you, you said. And now the show is over. The music has stopped playing. The flowers are all lying strewn. A shooting star waves by. The sky is all dark and the full moon looks at me and she begins to ask me why. Your love healed me in more ways than you know, you said. But who is going to heal me? Did this thought ever cross your mind while you led your heart seamlessly across into another timeline? Soul on a journey, the wise ones say. Love, apologize, forgive and walk peacefully away. I have nothing more to ask of you or even say. Not a squeak. Just an ocean full of love that is for keeps. So thank you for tearing my heart open. Maybe this will help me find what I have been searching for in this lifetime. Beautiful. Ah! It's too much. So one line which I was going through by that forgive and walk. Yeah. Yeah, I know. So that for me, I think, is a very important thing in life, you know, and I think, um, I think for all of us, when, uh, when we realize that um, we walked into a place which is absolutely not working out, you know, and is causing you a lot of harm, I think at that point of time, you need to somehow preserve yourself in the best way possible mm. you can. And I think when you are able to love, apologize and forgive. Forgive. I think forgive. Because when you forgive, then you let the you let all that go away because you're not holding on to it. Sometimes you are not able to forgive and that you will carry. And I think that is very important. You know, there is this uh, I don't know whether Mm, there is this Hawaiian prayer which is called the Ho'oponopono prayer which is a beautiful prayer that uh, it's basically thanking the universe, saying sorry to the universe, asking the universe for forgiveness and gratitude to the universe. Now I think one very important thing all of us as humans we, we, kind, of we kind of forget is to forgive ourselves. You know, we hold ourselves responsible for so many things. You know, because maybe because I did this, this happened. Because I, sometimes we need to say, okay, I forgive me. You know, sometimes you need to just do that. And um, it's an everyday thing, Ankit. It's, it's nothing that, nothing changes with, in one day. And, but I think every day a little bit makes a big difference. Beautiful. So, hoping it all works out in life for all of us. Beautiful. So I think we've already had so much of serious conversations. I know, too much. It's become it's, very heavy. It's time for the rapid fire round. First question is, what do you feel most connected to? Nature. According to you, what habits can make you live a healthier life? I think uh, eating everything in balance. You know, and doing a little bit of um, exercise and a little bit of healing every day. Your proudest moment? My proudest moment? I think it was when I bought my first house with my own money. Oh. Yes. Your funniest moment as a mother? Oh my God. There are so many. I... I there are so many. My kids are... Nuts. <laughs> but I, I can't pinpoint one. Okay. Sorry. Your greatest learning that you would like to pass on to everyone? There are no rules in life. Mm. There is nothing that I would be able to say to anybody that will apply to them 100% fully. We all have to kind of 
take each day mm. and try and make the best that we can with that day what practices keeps you spiritually grounded ah uh, i think the fact that um i actually say thank you every day at the end of the day so a friend of mine told me to do this and she said when you're going to sleep in the night just think of your day you know and what did i get up in the morning and do then 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 she said and just say thank you for it because you're still sleeping in a nice warm bed and you have a blanket over you and you're fine you're making plans for the next day so i think that's mm. what what do you think has been the best teacher in your life 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 has been the best <laughs> teacher in my life <laughs> your favorite philosophy live and let live your personal process to deal with a crisis dig a hole uh -huh. very deep uh -huh. and then dig it sideways and go and sit there so no one can find you <laughs> if you got an opportunity to go out on a date with 20 years old maria what would the dad date look like oh my god it would be so much of fun oh my god it'd be so much fun because ah <laughs> yeah, it would be a mad date because uh, I'm sure we would we would plan a holiday immediately. We would uh, go on a trek. We'd be sitting atop a high mountain, and uh, I think I would tell her, "Listen, just do exactly what you're doing. You're going to be fine." <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you for being on our show. Thank you, Ankit, oh, for having you. me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.